Well, we're gonna try to pick up where we left off yesterday. I caught 26 pounds in this area of Mill Lax here. And I'm just pulling up to these waypoints, these groups of waypoints I have. And I zoom in and out of my Ray Marine unit here. Um, we're down here on the south end of the lake and, and I can already tell we've got different conditions. We've got a west wind, which we haven't had, but I'm just pulling up to this group of, of waypoints and, and basically what we have here is we have a hump uh, with a nice little rock finger sticking off of it. And when I'm running, I like running a full 12 inch size map. And when I get to an area, I want to expose a little more. Um, I'll simply click home here um, and, and hit, you know, chart side vision and down vision at the same time. Um, so I'll click on that. And as that loads in this top window here, I've got my map. I know exactly what, you know, where I need to be to start making these casts. Um, and then I've got the down vision that shows exactly what's going on under me. Uh, and then my side vision, 150 feet to the left, 150 feet to the right. Basically what I'm looking for are these hard rock lines right here. As you can see, I've got waypoints all along this left side. Those big chunky rocks are the absolute deal, um, especially if they're they're isolated. You see an a patch of isolated boulders here, um, off to the left and off to the right. If you can imagine, the boat is dead center here. There's a high spot I can see right here, off my map. It's to the left, and it's just a nice little slope. You can see it clear as day. It's just a point that sticks out. Um, this is going to be a high percentage area. It's basically an underwater point. You can see it. We just went over the top of it, basically cut it in half. That's going to be a high percentage area. That's the end of a rock pile. And that's what these big smallmouth like. Look at, I'm already graphing a couple fish here down beneath the boat. And these smallmouth, especially this time of year, um, you know, they just move around on these rock piles. And that's what we're trying to do is intersect all these fish out here. You know, we had a south wind yesterday. We moved to the west wind. Um, so basically all my waypoints are sprinkled throughout this rock pile all across here. Today's going to be a little different. Um, I'm going to have to position west of these waypoints, cast with the wind, real long cast. I could drop these power poles even though we're out here in 22 feet of water. Basically what that does is it provides a drag. You can see my boat now starting to turn. They kind of parachute, you know, you don't need the really the big huge drift paddles. Just those skinny poles like that will help my, you know, keep the rear end of the boat towards the wind where I can cast straight down range. Again, quarter ounce jig head, three inch spark shad swim bait, seven foot shaky head rod. I like the shaky head rod over a drop shot rod. It's got a little more horsepower to it. Seven foot length, I'm able to make those real long casts. 15 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid, very, very thin line that casts a mile to a 10 pound Seaguar Tatsu leader. And I casted that quarter ounce jig down there and I'm targeting 18 to 22 feet of water. And basically I cast it out there, wait about eight or nine seconds. It, I could feel it hit the bottom. And from there, I just give it one pop and just slow wind it back. And every now and then I'll feel those big giant boulders down there. And that's where those fish are, that's what they're hanging out on is those big boulders. And I feel like if I swim this swim bait within 10 foot radius of where those fish are hanging out, I believe they'll, I'll get a bite on every single time. So another big key is having my Ray Marine units network together where I could actually see the side vision transducer off the rear. And all I gotta do is turn the boat to the left or to the right, and I know I can see exactly where those points are, those little rock points. There's a big rock point right there, and that's what I'm gonna try to target, 75 feet to the left of the boat, so I can, I'm gonna make a 75 foot cast, and I know I'm right on it. It's 75 feet to the left, so I'm gonna make that cast and swim my swim bait straight through those rock piles. And I know there are some big ones hanging out in those. The more sparse those boulders get, the bigger the fish are, especially out there in 22 feet of water. As far as the retrieve goes on these finesse swim baits, it's again, real slow, steady wind. This is a 2,500 size reel, nice and slow and steady. There's a fish. I don't know how big. Good way to start the morning. Yeah, I'm not a back reeler. I love, I love listening to that drag sing. I would say it's about a medium drag. These big, powerful smallmouth, they, they, they fight so hard, especially when they get close to the bow. This one here is only about a two and a half pounder. Fun sized fish, but he absolutely hammered that spark shad. I'm not much of a back reeler. I just like, like keeping a loose drag, uh, especially when they get near the boat. You'll see with this small jig head, that they're beak hooked every, you know, just about every single time. And this one's just a little one on 10 pound test Tatsu. I could just kind of swing them in here. And that's a nice one. Nice fat fish. Start of the morning. A 
Other thing with swim bait fishing, whether they be small swim baits or big swim baits, you want to fish the bait all throughout the retrieve. You never know when a big one's going to bite at the end of, end of a cast, midway back, or even at the boat. A lot of times those fish will, will follow it all the way towards the boat. And when that swim bait gets to the side of the boat, that big fish feels like that bait fish or that trout or that hitch or that big giant shad is, is pegged up against something, either you know just something floating, which is the boat. They feel like they have it pegged and trapped. And a lot of times that's when they'll commit is right at the boat. Okay, I'm slow winding this spark shad back to the boat and I'm just feeling it thunk, thunk, thunk. It's hitting rock piles, isolated boulders down there. And that's what triggers those smallmouth. It's almost like a crankbait down there. If you bang it off a rock, that ball head does a real good job at deflecting off those rocks. I just hit another one. A lot of times they'll bite that swim bait just as soon as it deflects off that rock. Um, those smallmouth love tracking baits, uh, whether it be a tube, a, a rattling type bait, a jerk bait, they love tracking top waters. Uh, it's no different with a swim bait. They'll track it and track it and track it until something triggers that fish to bite. And there's without a doubt in the last seven days, it seems like whenever the sun pops out and the wind blows, that's when the fish bite the best. And that's, that's very typical for smallmouth, but especially in the, in the fall, especially in the, in, the, in the spring, you really have to pay attention to what the weather's doing. Here we got sunny blue skies to our right, uh, and then we've got dark gloomy clouds to our left. Now we've been fishing under these clouds for about an hour or so, and it's been really slow. So I'm really anxious to see, once those clouds move out of here, what the fish do. And I have a good idea that they're gonna start biting. So it's always good to keep that kind of thing in mind and uh, you know, come up with a game plan as far as a tournament scenario goes. And, um, now, if you were to go to the far north end of this lake right now, you'd have sun and wind. Um, but we're just going to wait for this, this cloud cover to kind of dissipate. And, uh, and my prediction is we're going to start catching them. Just loaded up on it. Can't tell how big it is. It's swimming towards me. Oh yeah, three inch spark shad. <laughs> oh, giant fish. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, look at this one. Come here, come here. Oh, come here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big giant smallmouth. Finesse swim baiting. Whew. Look at that little thing. <laughs>